name this the case for Ray Rice? Or why we should get rid of equal rights? Like, what's he gonna do? Like, I don't know. He could fucking crack your head wide open, you know? I hope he finds out. What if this is how he finds out? What if this is how he finds out? That would be fucking hilarious. You can go to prison for that. Like, now? 100%. This episode of Two Bears, One Cave is brought to you by Sattva. I am a huge proponent, fan of sattva because I've been sleeping on a sattva for over a decade. Over 10 years, I've tried the whole product line and I can guarantee that you will have an improvement over your current uh, homeless mattress that you sleep on, even if, even if you don't think it is, it is, uh, compared to what sattva gives you. So, stop sleeping outside, move indoors with the rest of us, and get a high quality, environmentally friendly mattress that has huge, huge savings passed on to you uh, because they don't commission salespeople, they don't have a bunch of brick and mortar places, they just have a great product. And you can get $200 off any mattress of your choice by going to sattva, S-A-A-T-V-A dot com slash the shit. That's right, sattva.com slash the shit and get $200 off any mattress of your choice. Welcome to the program and welcome back, the one and only Giannis Papas, everybody. Let him hear it. Good to Make be sure here. you watch Mom Love available on YouTube. Yes. Um, you also have another, don't you have another one on YouTube? I got another one on YouTube. Yeah. And please, I'll be in uh, the Wilbur Theater on July 8th and uh, the Paramount and Sony Hall in New York, Paramount in Long Island. So go to yannispappas.com, yannispappascomedy.com for tickets. I forgot my own website. You forgot your own website? Yeah. That was, um, those are all three great venues, by the way. I've been to all three of those. They're amazing. Yeah. The Wilbur is also like, have you been to the Wilbur before? It's my first time doing the Wilbur. I'm excited. Man, I feel yeah. like that is, um, like one of the milestones of being a comedian is doing the Wilbur. Yeah. It's a, it's like, I don't know. It's a special room, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. I feel like I'm like, uh, right now I'm like, those numbers are starting to creep up. Thanks to all you guys who are having me on. So it's oh, like, no, man. the Wilbur's one of those like milestones where you're like, yeah, okay. It's, it's, it's yeah. rad. It's rad. It's like, it's theater, you know, it's a th proper theater, but it has club feel. And there's not that many rooms like that. Yeah, a lot of some of there's the, there's some theaters that are like around that same size that feel enormous, but that feels like they're right up on you because it's old, and there's not that many old like the old ones are are the old ones have a shitty entrance in, shitty green rooms, you know, like you duck into things because everybody was like five two <laughs> when they built it. Yeah. But the cool thing is that they built it for whatever was the the acoustics of that era, which means that it was all built like you know with sound as a priority. So everybody's like on top of you. Yeah. You know? And it's there's not that many rooms like that. Because they didn't have amplification back then. No. So they built it good. Yeah, they built it good. Yeah. I mean, the seats are probably, you know, they have big good seats. There's some of the old ones too, like they have shitty seats or there'll be like a column in the middle of the theater and people are like, I have to sit behind this. They're like, it's fucking 1908 when they built this. What do you want? Nobody complained back then. Shut up. Yeah, they had so many things to worry about. They always yeah. forgot one thing. Like, oh man, there's a pole in the there's middle. Oh yeah. A huge pole in the middle of this place. Yeah, you know, like, we haven't figured out how to structurally keep it up without a pole in the middle. Haven't your three of your kids died from the plague? Is this pole really a big thing? Like, yeah, that's true. Yeah, right. yeah. It's like, I'm sorry, I forgot. My family died from plague. I'm a little distracted. <laughs> I'll just sit and listen to the show. You're right. <laughs> God, I, I never thought about how much... Did they have anxiety back then, or did they, accept, they had more of an acceptance of death could happen at any moment? I've thought about this a number yeah. of times, and I think, you know, like, there's people now, if you say someone died, they're like, huh, like, the way that death hits people <laughs> is like, oh, my God. Death was so common, it had to be just like, what you, you know... What'd you have for lunch? Yeah. It had to be just, how's your family? Well, you know, two of the kids died. My wife died. My parents are dead. My sister died. <laughs> and people were like, yeah, I, you know, I had a bunch too that died. And yeah. then they're like, isn't it great that we're not dead? I don't yeah. know. I think they were just <laughs> probably, like, And then they were probably just like, you want a coffee? Or like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was probably like very normal. Yeah. And then it's probably like, how they, well, you know, the three of them got sick, the flu and stuff. And then, you know, a couple of the kids got murdered. Because... Um, <laughs> People also killed everybody oh, over dude, anything. Yes. Yeah, there was no ring cameras back then, so like it was very easy to like break into people's houses. No ring, no lawsuits. Yeah, you know, it was I don't just even like, know how anyone got any sleep back then. What Can happened? you imagine sleeping with it without knowing that the 
the cops had to come to your house on a horse or something, or they had to run. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they had to run there. And then there was no way to call them. You'd have to like blow a conch or something. I don't know. How did you, how yeah. do you call the cops you back in the day? You just had to like, you had to be ready to kill too. You had to be ready to fight. Yeah. And it's like, you weren't like, throw throw the dukes up, <laughs> yeah. you know? You're like, I have this fucking bayonet and I'm just going <laughs> to just shove it into somebody and it, hope they die. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. We'd all be dead. Joe, Joe Rogan might be alive. He'd be able to. Yeah. He. A lot of us would be dead. A lot of us would be dead. Yeah. A lot of us would be dead. And uh, I don't know, the ones that are still alive, you had a body count. You know what I mean? Like, if you were alive right now at your age, and I was like, how many people have you killed? You'd be like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> First of all, we'd be like great-grandfathers at yeah, this point. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. We would. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people live to be 30. Yeah. You were making life decisions, like real decisions at 15. Yeah, you were. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think Alexander the Great conquered the world at 21. I mean, how nuts is that? He was 21 and he was like, he conquered the known world. He was like the leader. He was like a grown up man. At 21, I was like, you know, drinking brews. I think I had syphilis. I don't, it was like I was in college. <laughs> I was taking antibiotics. Yeah. I was not. You I'm, know, at 15, you would have a, a lady and a, probably a couple of kids. Yeah. And people would be like, you know what? You did all right. You did all right. Yeah. <laughs> You did all right. Have you noticed as we've gotten, uh, you know, more advanced, like the older people are looking younger and younger. Like I'm, I'm wearing the same outfit I think I wore when I was 12 yeah, or 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you look at old pictures and you see like a 14-year-old kid, he's in like a three-piece suit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he looks like Winston Churchill. Was and he's that like playing stickball. The thing that, <laughs> yeah, they, they, did, they, they ran in sweat in those things. <laughs> did it bother your dad the way society dressed as he got you know what I mean like in his later years yeah I think he was just perplexed by it I mean he was in the my dad had me later he was like like people do now you know yeah so my dad uh had me when he was like 46 yeah. 47 he fought in the Korean war yeah and so it was just weird for him he was like you know I was 24 and I, I was just like I don't know what I want to do with my life he was like by the time I was 24 I'd fought in three wars yeah, I had four grandkids. I had started two law practices. Yeah, and I was just like, still like, I'm going to live in this house still. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My dad, and I'm going to do skits for a living. I'm going to do plays. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to do one-man plays. He must have thought you were mentally oh, ill, right? Oh, dude. My grandfather had a 24-hour restaurant. I, 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 you know, he died before I was born, but, you know, he was one of the Greek generation that started the 24-hour diner. Yeah. And I think my dad said, literally, I met him like 15 times. Cause he just like worked. They yeah. used to those immigrants just worked all the time. They yeah. worked, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I think if he saw what I was doing, he'd be like, "Huh? He, Are yeah. you wearing a wig? Yeah. <laughs> what is he? What is this? You getting paid for this? What's, what's how? What? <laughs> he just would have no concept. It would be like when the Native Americans saw the conquistador ships. They're like, "What the fuck?" Can you is imagine that? if that guy saw you do a show and then saw somebody give you a check and be like, "The fuck was that for?" And you're <laughs> yeah. like. For your little dance yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, to watch, he just watch us talk to crowds. Be like, yeah. you got to check for it. Like, where's the work? He's like, I'm, I'm doing 24 hour shifts. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. yeah. And my dad is funny. He, um, the thing, he, he hated scruff. So he'd come up to me and he'd be like, what is this shit? And he's like, I was like, it's my face. Yeah. Like, Why don't you shave? I was like, because I don't want to. He hated that. And he hated. Like he called them blue jeans. Like he's American. He was like blue, <laughs> blue jeans. Yeah, blue jeans. <laughs> and he hated like he hated like dress down looks. Like when we were especially for flying. He was like, you know, when I growing up, people wore coat and tie to fly. Oh, it was like an event to fly, right? That was a big deal. Yeah. It was a big he's like, people were like, I'm gonna fly today. Yeah. Like they got dressed up and the people wear literal pajamas and slippers. Yeah. You know? I saw some I saw a woman board the flight in a bikini with a wrap. Like what you see what you wear at the pool. Yeah. She boarded like that, you know, and yeah. then he would just be like, God. And then it his version of dressing dent like it's Sunday, it was hanging out at the house, khakis collared button down shirt and yeah I'd be like why don't you put on something comfortable yeah and he'd go i am comfortable yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah that was that mr rogers era when like yeah. they when they put on yeah. sneakers they were like whoa whoa i am <laughs> dressed way down still a tie like a shirt yeah. with a sweater on it yeah take the jacket off but still always some sort of coat on yeah yeah we, we would buy my dad sneakers as a joke <laughs> he would never wear i it. mean he, he eventually eventually did but i mean i would say 90 percent of what i ever saw him wear 
you would consider like Mr. Rogers wear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it was pretty formal. You know, it's interesting because I think it would. Uh, you know, he's pro. We're all probably two, three generations. A lot of us are the kids of immigrants in some way, three, four generations. Sure. And their mentality was just like they're here to loot. Everyone came here to loot. Yeah, they were like we're here for loot money yeah we're gonna work we're gonna make it yeah and so like they were always thinking about be looking more formal sure and, and uh, looking like they were millionaires and stuff and then they went up there and then they had kids and we just took it right back took down it, to it. laziness <laughs> and yeah. what's the least amount of work i can yeah. do and get paid the most i think because they were you know they were working so hard that generation especially immigrants more so because they were like i got into this place so i'm gonna bust my ass that their kids were like Oh, you hooked it up. Yeah. I think a lot of the kids are like, you did it. And yeah. Like, I and they don't feel the the urgency. The urgency to do something wasn't there for a lot of kids. And they get mad at it, but it's really their fault. Because yeah. I remember like my other grandfather was like, I work so hard, so you'd never have to. And I was like, great, Yeah, great. I'm living your dream for me right yeah. now. I'm working never. I work yeah. for forty minutes. Yeah. Like that, and I'm, I sometimes I stress about that. Like, and I gotta also, do two? I gotta do two of them. I feel like it's too much work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's too much work. I gotta sit here and talk. Yeah. It's like, God damn. God, I gotta go have fun with Tom Segura today for uh, Jesus Christ. This is what is this? Like I'm in a coal mine. Do you have the thing where sometimes now I real because you know everybody sees their their parent. I think boys see their dads as like something special, right? And then like you hit a certain age where you go, Oh, he's just a he's just a guy. Yeah. And it took me a long time <laughs> before I realized that my dad's a terrible driver. Like I, I didn't realize how bad of a driver he was until like a couple of years ago. I was like in the car, I was like, oh, he's always driven like this and he sucks it. And like, I always thought like, oh my, like, you know what I mean? You go, yes. like, my dad he's a is, hero. He's yeah, a hero. yeah. And I was like, cause he, he used to drive where he would go, um, he'd hit the gas and then release it, zoom. Zoom. So like basically nauseating. Yeah. He and drove I, like a woman. Yeah, he drove like say. a woman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he drove like a woman with a smaller brain. Yeah. And I was like, I remember pointing it out a few times and I was like, hey, could you stop doing it? Because once you like get older, you know, you're like, hey, man. Yeah. Could you stop doing that? He's yeah. Like, doing was that what? like the first time, the first suggestion you had from him? And then you were like that because that you cra it's almost like, uh, yeah, that I remember those moments where you, you go from that shift of like, he's a God, he's perfect. Yeah. Like, oh, shit. He's 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 just a dude. He's just a flawed, just regular a dude. Flawed dude. And yeah. it like changes your it like cracks your whole perspective. It cracks it. It does. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a few of them where I was like. Oh, wow. Like, I didn't really... But I remember the driving one really hit me, where I was like, like, you're god-awful, <laughs> you know? Like, you almost like, wanted to call, like call you're the literally, yeah. police on him. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And I, want, I wanted him to know how bad he... Like, that's what I wanted. <laughs> I wanted there to be, like, a news article about it. You know, that he would just, like, read and be like, God, I'm really bad at this. Dude, huh? we got a lot in common because I know your dad was in the military too. I yeah, read your yeah. book. It was hilarious. Yeah. All those oh, stories about you. him. Yeah. And uh, my dad was, uh, that was one of the things about him. He was an absolute horrible driver. One time uh, he made a U-turn on the Verrazano Bridge, which is the bridge between Staten Island and Brooklyn. Whoa. And he made a U-turn on the bridge. Jesus. So like, he's because you, you can get, you, there's a lane in that's, Bay Ridge. By the way, even conceptually, that's insane. It's insane, yeah. dude. Yeah. And it's not like a, you know, it's New York. So there's yeah. trucks <laughs> coming. Be crazy, And so dude. he's like turning. Fish trucks and people shit. People are fucking people and they're just going, fuck you. <laughs> we were like six. It was me and my friend in the back seat, And he's just, people are cursing. It's New York, so they're yeah. letting them have it. And he's just like smoking a cigarette, you know, no seatbelt. And he made a U-turn on the Verrazano Bridge. That's crazy. Which, you could go to prison for that. Like now, I mean, I don't know. It's, it was a horror. So when he cut in, like a truck had to swerve and fell off the bridge. And then it was commotion. And then it was like nothing happened. That's hilarious. And another time we were in Barbados on vacation. And you had to drive in the other side in Barbados. Yeah. Like, like the English do. Yeah. Like for whatever reason. And uh, we were in one of those buggies. My whole family was in it. And there was a woman like carrying a jug on her head and carrying a jug in her hand. Yeah. And he couldn't drive. Uh, he was struggling. He kept almost dipping into the side. And he drove past her and knocked a jug out of her hand. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrifying being terrifying. in a car with her. Yeah, he was a horrible now, driver. Did, here's the interesting thing, though, because this is a big thing for men. Did he know how horrible a driver he was? I think he did know. You yeah. think he did know? I think he did know. See, the big thing for me is that there's no way my father knew or accepted that he, that, you know what I mean? Like in his mind, it's a great driver. He was married. Because most, dude, most yeah. dudes 
are like, I'm fucking great drunk. Yeah. I could fight, yeah. I could fuck, yeah. and I could drive. <laughs> yeah. Like most guys <laughs> don't want to hear any of that shit right. about them not being able to do that. I remember I took him to a game in LA when I was still living in LA. We went down to uh, a Rams game and they were playing in LA. I forget the name of this. It was before the SoFi. But anyway, we're going back up to the city and we're in the 110, which is a major freeway. And it's like mid afternoon, I guess on a Sunday. So the point is, this is a major, there's major, but there's not traffic, but but cars are moving. I mean, this is like four or five lanes of moving. And I get him in this car that I got that has like a real engine. On it. I'm like, you want to drive? He's like, yeah. And we're in the speeding lane, like the, the far left lane, the carpool lane. And he's going like 70. And I'm like, yo, man, hit the gas, <laughs> right? Like I, I can see the cars behind us. Yeah. And he's like, oh. So he goes, Rrr. and he goes like up to like 78. And then he slows back down. And I'm sitting here the whole time. Like, <laughs> and I could feel like my anxiety building. And he's just talking to me. I'm like, hey, hey, hey. I go, you got to speed up. Drive like a man. Yeah, yeah, speed up. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, oh. And then he like speeds up. And then it immediately declines. And I'm like, get out of this lane. Like, just get out of the lane. And he's like, get out of this. Lane. I go, yeah, because you're driving too slow. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's like missing exits. I was fucking losing yeah. my mind. Your but, dad, it sounds like people when they, you know, because when you, somebody's doing that, and they're impeding your process. Yeah, you want to pass, but you have to see him. You ever notice you got to see him? You got oh, you always you have look. to see him. Yeah, that and you always play that game. You're like, was he Asian? Was he your woman? A woman? Yeah, yeah Asian always. or woman? Asian yeah. or woman? I is... play that game every time. Yeah, but that's the game we all play. Don't act yeah. like you don't play. Everyone that game plays too. that game, dude. If you have an upcoming summer trip abroad, my go-to travel hack is Babbel. Whether you're a seasoned travel or embarking on your first adventure, communication is the key to fully experiencing a new culture. That's where Babbel comes in. Babbel is the language learning app that has sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, there's still time to learn a new language before you reach your destination. I'm telling you, this adds so much to your travel. We went to Italy and we got Babbel and we had so much fun, just me and the girls, talking Italian to ourselves and practicing. Of course, Isla was using pickup lines, but practicing uh, on the waiters. It, was, it, it made the trip really inclusive with Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson so you can start having real conversations in as little as three weeks right now get up to 55 percent off your subscription when you go to babble.com slash bears that's babble.com slash bears for up to 55 percent off your subscription Babbel, language for life whether you're new to cannabis or an old pro there is absolutely no fun in guessing, right? You don't want to guess, you don't want to try any products that are iffy, and a lot of them are. Well, Mood puts an end to that. This is federally legal Delta 8 and Delta 9 THC that you can have legally shipped right to your door. No doctors, no waiting, just affordable legal THC. For a limited time, Mood is giving our listeners free Delta 9 gummies and 20% off your first order. Visit hellomood.com and use our offer code BEARS. We have multiple staff members who are really enjoying their Mood products, saying it helps them with stress and helps them sleep easier. However you like to take THC, Mood has you covered. Great for both beginners and veterans alike. Ready for a good time without the guesswork? Order your THC products from Mood today. And for 20% off your order and free gummies, go to hellomood.com and use the promo code BEARS. That's hello, M-O-O-D dot com, promo code BEARS, B-E-A-R-S, for 20% off your order and free gummies. Yesterday, I'm And when like, it's not, you're very surprised. You're blown away. So when they saw your dad, they were like, what the fuck? fuck? That yeah. was him? This fucking guy? <laughs> Bald white guy? <laughs> this guy's usually hammering. <laughs> yeah. No, he fucking, like, yesterday I was, I was, uh, sitting driving and again it was like moving like i mean i'm on the highway but it's moving and then all of a sudden i'm doing 35 behind one car and i'm like this fucking asshole so i do the thing where i go around and then of course i slow down for a second and i look <laughs> asian guy on his phone <laughs> oh god 
So like he's dry, he's actually he's like this. Yeah, it's worse than COVID. Yeah, I'm like God, he made you damn. madder than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah dude, <laughs> go back to Wuhan. I fucking lost my mind. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I hope yeah. they clipped this out. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck off. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know what they're doing in New York now. Um. You know, it's funny, like, I just feel like every government right now is trying to get all that money back. Yeah. That, like, it just gave out during COVID or whatever. And the economy's tight. So now they're doing these little schemes now in New York where they have cameras everywhere. Yeah. And they hit you, you know, they hit you for a speeding ticket, but it's no points. If it's, oh, it's just like, a collect revenue. Oh, dude, yeah. if you're like two miles per hour over the speed limit, yeah. they send you. And it's like, it feels like, it feels like you're getting shaken down by the mafia sure like you get that thing because you are you yeah, are you yeah. kind of are and you get it in the mail and it's like yeah you were going 37 and a 32 there's a school somewhere in new york so you were yeah. in a school zone yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're like what i just someone just told me was it in la somewhere where they just got pulled over for doing like five over and i was like what they're doing it they got pulled over for going like five or six over i was like i had never heard of. i got a ticket one time for going nine over and which i was like Come on. Yeah. This was years ago in South Carolina. And then a lot of times in the South, there's a big thing about you have an out of state plate, you're fair game. At least that's like how people talk, you know? So it's like if you're driving through Georgia, you got Florida plates, it's like, fuck you. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. Georgia, you know? Yeah. So I don't know if it was that, but yeah, I was probably like, a little bit of that. I was like, nine over, man. Yeah. Like, don't you guys have literally some shit to do? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you don't think there's other cars on this highway doing 20 over? Yeah. Go get them. But it was like, nah, you get yeah. a ticket. Yeah. Nice fat ticket too. How much was it? I mean, back then, I mean, it was at least two seventy to it. Which for me, I was in college. I was like, oh, two seventy is a lot, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know. Uh, yeah, I hate those when you get caught and you're like nine or eight over, or like twelve over, or whatever. But you know those ones where they get you and you just you just give in. You're like, you got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like they come to your side and you have no explanation there's oh, yeah. nothing you can think about i've started with yeah. apologies i i, <laughs> yeah, I know dude, you know i'm sorry just take me away yeah. you like put your hands up you're like yeah a ticket's not even enough i should be in prison for that yeah you caught me i was going 97 you got me by the way for people who, some people don't like i have friends who talk to cops so aggressively and i always get something like jesus christ like and they go their whole thing is they're like cops are dicks i go i think they're dicks to you because you're a dick <laughs> because like i always like when a cop pulls me over i'm never like what's the fucking problem you know <laughs> like it's like you're insane yeah you always like if you want your chance the best chance you ever have of being like you know i'm gonna let you off with a warning is like how's it going officer or sir or yeah. ma'am yeah and then i did not realize that of course like here's my paper like just be polite like you would be to anybody. Yeah. And some of my friends, I have friends who go like, hey, like that. Like they, they start conversations with cops like that. They're like, hey, yeah, that's what I fucking thought. And they, like, like really aggressive. And I'm like, and then they go, all cops, I fucking hate all cops. I go, you know, I get that. But definitely all cops hate you. Yeah. Just, you know, because you start every conversation like you have something to hide. Yeah. Like, and they have a major advantage over you. Yeah. That you can't like, you know, they have a gun on them. You know, yeah, you don't they, have a gun. They got the law. They have the law. Yeah, you're not in a great position. There's a there are enough variables in this where they could ruin your day. They could ruin your day. Yeah. It could be a real impediment to your day. Yeah, you know, uh, it, nobody does that more than women. You ever see the way women <laughs> talk to cops? Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> they don't know what like they don't even know the thing that we do as men, which is every man always sizes another man up, even on a, like a subconscious level. Oh yeah. You always do it. Totally. Every guy, when you walk into a room and there's another man, part of your brain goes, could this guy fuck me up? Absolutely. fucking right? yeah. You don't have to consciously, your brain just tells you yeah. like, hey, by the way, don't fuck with this guy too hard. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. But women are just like, what's he gonna do? I'm like, I don't know, he could <laughs> fucking crack your head wide open, yeah. you know? <laughs> Yeah, they just, it's the same way they talk to husbands. Yeah. You know? it's like, <laughs> once in a while, like, did you forget, like, yeah. I could squish your head. You take your head and just squish it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's really, the way they talk, the way my wife talks to me sometimes, I just look at her and go like, Jesus. You out of your mind? Yeah, like, what, you know, 
You know, I think like women are upset because of like the treatment that they had in history, and but they don't take into account the way it was before that treatment started. Yeah. Like, so it was like this and it was out of hand. And guys right. were like, we can't get anything done. Yep. We can't like worry about saber tooth tigers and listen to this bitch cracking off at the mouth yeah. while we're trying to figure out science and math and fucking civilization. <laughs> so for just a little while, you're going to get hit. Yeah. You're going to get hit and you're going to shut the fuck up until we build shit and it gets comfortable. And then you can run your fucking mouth again because we invented air conditioning. But until that time, you're going to get punched. You're going to get punched. Yeah. yeah. And it was totally, I'm for that. Yeah. Or else we wouldn't be here. You can tell who grew up in like a house and an environment where there was never the implication of a threat. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, because like not all women speak to cops that way, but I know ex like when you said that, I know exactly who you're talking about. And it's somebody who's gone unchecked in life. Yes. It's not even, you know, they're just in life. They mouthed off at home. Nobody ever said shit. They talked to their dad like that. They talked to their brother like that. They talked to teachers like that. And everybody let it slide. Yeah. Everybody let it slide. And then, yeah, you could do that to like a cop who's just like, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab you by your hair, <laughs> <laughs> pull you out of the window. I don't give a fuck because this is, you know, Macon, Georgia. <laughs> And then I'm going to drop my elbow onto your face as I, as you hit the pavement. That lady's going to be like, what the? It's like, yeah, you don't talk to people like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. They should have, cops should always have like a big, like big fat black cop. Just it, uh, every car should have a big fat black woman <laughs> cop just for that situation. Yeah. So when the guy goes over and she just starts, and then he just goes, he just goes yeah, Tanisha. Yeah, come here. Yeah, Tanisha just comes over, pulls the hair, yeah. you know, takes the earrings out and just yeah. gives yeah. her the thing. Yeah. Gives her a little after school outside beating. No, you're right, though. <laughs> Wives need to get checked, too. I mean, I've told mine a few times. I'm like, do you realize that, like, with my bare hand, I could just crack your sternum? <laughs> You'd have no protection. Like their chest plate is just gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like us fighting them is like us fighting Brock Lesnar. They don't get that. They don't get it. They don't get that at all. Mm -mm. They don't get the weight difference. It's a, it's a fight that would never be put on because right. the weight difference is too yeah, great. Yeah. The promoter's like, what the fuck are we promoting? Yeah. You yeah. couldn't even put that on. Like they just don't get it. They don't. They don't. Like, <laughs> I can, pick, I can pick you up. Yeah, and it's only because of the law, you know? And so maybe that law needs to change for a little bit yeah. until we get them back in order. Like, whenever you hear a story about a guy just beating the fuck out of some chick, are you like, well, I mean, I get it. Well, you always go like, well, <laughs> yeah. But you also go like, well, well what did she say? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like in New York, like I noticed this thing um, – in, uh, you know, in a lot of other cities, homeless people are very aggressive. Miami, yeah. I lived there for a year. They'll be aggressive, right? They'll yeah. make you, they'll be like, hey man, somebody needs to watch your car and they kind of like shake you down. Uh, yeah. And then if you don't, they'll like stick a knife in your tire. And <laughs> yeah. So like, you know, they're very aggressive to get in your face and stuff like that. New York, New York, they don't, right? New York, they're very respectful of your space and stuff like that. And that's because every once in a while as New Yorkers, because they know, you don't know everybody in New York, people could be dangerous. But every once in a while, New Yorkers, we do this thing where we just set one of them on fire yeah, to send a message. <laughs> and that's yeah. how you keep it. Yeah. And then that spreads. And then it's a nice detente yeah. where they ask respectfully. They don't get in your fucking space. If you're eating at brunch outside, they don't come over and ask you for money. You just got to set one yes. on fire That's a, to send a message. I feel like- And that's what we need to do with women. Just uh, for a little while, beat them and then go back to the law. But just for like a month. A month, yeah. A month, it's just like no more of that equal rights shit. Do you remember that? Uh, first of all, a huge advantage of a, a city with that population is that someone's always, there's always going to be someone who does some wild shit that leaves everybody going, that can happen yeah, here. They, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> that can happen here. Yeah. Like, villages don't have that. Yeah. But big cities like New York, they're like, Look, man, you never know. Someone might eat your face. It, like, could it happen. Happens. Yeah. It actually happens yeah. here. You've seen anything, and literally everything and anything has happened. In the, like, you go down to the subway and you see like a guy shitting in a, like on a public uh, waste bin. Yeah. And you're like, I've seen, I've seen so many weird things. Downtown LA, same dude. I've yeah. been to downtown LA and just seen a guy just right there on Third Street 
just squat and shit right there on the <laughs> sidewalk. And you're like, Phew. and then when you walk those streets, your nose always tell you, it's like, oh, that's human shit. Yeah. Like that's not, it has a really distinct yeah. odor. It's not, it's, it's a human, you could make it's it not out. dog shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're like, that's, that's a guy's <laughs> yeah, shit right yeah. there. Yeah. And you know, it's great about those cities, like cities like New York and LA where everyone's like doing something or like, you know, busy. It's, it is true. And they're heavily populated. You could just be driving and you'll be like, oh, that, that's a guy eating another guy. And you'd be like, but I still got a meeting. I got, I you got it. Yeah, yeah. You don't, you know, and another, if it was to happen in a smaller town, that oh, would yeah. be the biggest. Everyone thing. would stop. You just yeah. would tell someone in passing, oh, before I saw a guy eating another guy. But yeah. anyway, let's get back to this movie bitch. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember speaking of guys beating women? Do you remember <laughs> when, uh, do you remember Greg Hardy? He always, yeah, the football player. He played in the and now he plays the now Dallas he, Cowboys. Yeah, he yeah. fights now in mixed martial arts, and I don't think he's done very well. So maybe that's the the sweet justice of this all. Yeah, he's gotten uh, beat yeah. up. Yeah, so he's he's gotten beat up a few times. I mean, he's a big dude who most of us should not approach. Um, but you know, the guy's trying to make something of it. But when he got in trouble, he was playing in the NFL. And he th he was he like beat up, but he threw her, and then it said in the article onto a pile of guns. Yeah. So he like he, he just like <laughs> tossed her, and she landed on guns. <laughs> and I was always like, that's a that's a crazy look right there. Yeah. 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 But as a visual, it's right? just funny. He had a pile of guns. Yeah. I yeah. But you pull saying. that up. Yeah. Pull up the article. Yeah. He um. You know, Ray Rice, it, you know, the reason why Ray Rice, I think it was just if it was on camera. I think if Greg Hardy was on oh, camera. Oh, yeah. It's just Forever. Whole, yeah. And Ray Rice, she technically ran at him, right? I don't. I think it looked like she was going for a one-leg takedown, if I remember. I don't remember that. I mean, you got to find the article about the incident, not the suspension. It's like, when the thing about, yeah, the thing about, having video it changes everything it changes everything any any type of crime on camera like when people get to see it it changes everything because what i think what greg hardy did was like just as bad if not worse and he still was yeah. able to play they yeah, got a 10 game suspension yeah but the thing is that was like the ray rice it was security footage from the casino i think it was a casino right or it yeah. was a hotel casino or just a hotel the elevator but yeah but you get to you see the full impact and then you see like what a powerful like it's so strong. Yeah. When you realize this is like a this is a top tier athlete. Yeah. It's not like it's not like when you, not that there's cool ones, but you know, it's not like it's yeah. not like that. It was like holy <laughs> yeah. fuck. She went limp like a noodle. Um it was bad. So this is the hardy one, yeah. So it's like minutes earlier he said she had thrown her against a tile bathtub wall, tossed her onto a futon futon covered in assault <laughs> rifles. <laughs> And choked her until she told him to kill me so I don't have to. God damn. Yeah, I did. I did. And he's so big that I imagine that, like, I don't know how you even survive. Like, if he hit me, it would be a hospital for a month. Right. So I don't know how a woman survives a guy that, a defensive end in the NFL doing that. They it's are crazy. So, They're very resilient women. They, got, they, <laughs> <laughs> they can have babies and stuff like that. Like, you know, it's oh, like, shit. I feel bad for a lot of that stuff, but they are resilient, you yeah. know? Yeah, sure. They can take, like, and also emotionally resilient. Like, not only can they give babies and rear them and get through postpartum and all that stuff, yeah. but like, just, I mean, think about um, Ray Rice's wife. She's stuck by his side. He knocked her out cold in the elevator. Yeah. And then she was like, guys, guys, it's cool. I deserved it. Like, yeah, and you I didn't think, hear what I said. I, I spit in them. And like the NFL was like, no, but it's like, we should have forgiven it if she forgave if it. If she forgave it. Yeah. And not only that, it wasn't like, I believe they're still together. Yeah. So it also wasn't like, I'm just with you for this NFL check. Like that's still his lady, I believe. Dude is, I mean, I think that's the mo one of the most admirable love stories I've ever heard. Yeah. Like they should make a movie. No, about you're it. totally. You're, I, I'm not joking. Yeah, I, I'm I, with I totally you. agree. Yeah, I mean, she knocked me on an elevator, but I, I'm a ride or die. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm I love a ride the guy. or die. I yeah. love the guy. It's like a lot of people say what Woody Allen did is bad, but like they're still together. Yeah, it's 40 years. Yeah, I know people of the same age who broke up after six months. Yeah, so who's got the better love? Who's got real love? Who's got real love? Yeah, it's, it's Woody, Woody Allen. Allen and his stepdaughter. <laughs> are they still together? Yeah, they're still together. They're dude. Still together. Ray Rice and her are still together. And her jaw looks fine. Yeah. He actually, I think he fixed it. Because it looked, 
I can't believe we're doing this. <laughs> Are you going to name this the case for Ray Rice? Or why we should get rid of equal rights? <laughs> Dare I say the economy has been challenging. No one knows what the futures hold. So to keep your business thriving, you need to find some ways to save money without cutting corners. Let me tell you, when it comes to saving money as a small business owner, use ShipStation. ShipStation gives you access to discounts of up to 84% off USPS, UPS rates, and you can manage every order from one simple-to-use dashboard. You lower your shipping costs and make returns easier. Your customers are going to stay happy while you save money. We've been using ShipStation as long as we've been running an online business. And what I love about it is the discounts. It hooks you up with the industry-leading discounts, so you never need to worry about overpaying for shipping. <clears throat> like I said, 84% off USPS and UPS rates. And if that's not enough, use our promo code to try ShipStation for free for two months. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce business with ShipStation, and 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. Let me tell you, worry less about the bottom line when, when you save money with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com slash cave today and sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com. Slash cave. Women are too powerful. That's the <laughs> name of the episode. Too powerful right now. That's all I'm saying. It's a little too much. No. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. That is a love story, though. It's a love the, story. The Woody man. Allen one, too. It's like he is. I also, you know, it's funny how how people's declines are portrayed and perceived. His is fascinating to me. So first of all, I'll say this: I'm not a New Yorker. I love I love going to New York. It's one of my favorite cities to visit in the world. I, but I did not grow up. I think a lot of people from New York have an admiration for him that is specific to New York and New Yorkers. In other words, like when they're like, oh, they're like, it was like, oh, it's a new Woody Allen film. Like, I've seen Woody Allen films that I enjoy, and I've seen ones where I'm like, I don't think this is fucking worth. Like, I don't care. I don't admire. I don't go. I admire this guy. Like, the way that I hear people admire him, um, I always thought he's kind of weird. But that's not that. You know, there's a lot of artists that are weird. Uh, I thought this story was gross, and I I thought the other stories that like his biological or said to be biological son has accused are are horrific, and people let it slide for like people were just like yeah yeah fine, and then a few years ago it kind of became people were like no he's done but it also feels like it was quietly done it's like yeah I guess he's got to pay the price for this yeah like it's not really like this amplified voice of we're done with this guy, it's like a quiet resignation of, you know, if people keep saying you fucked a kid, yeah. <laughs> what, what can you do? Yeah. It's like they're reluctantly doing, I mean, he's obviously, I mean, he's an older man now. He's got to be like 80 or something, he's right? He's in his 80s. In his yeah. 80s. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the late, and the girl is like, what, 40 years younger? 87. Yeah, he's 87. But he was making movies up till a couple years ago. Dude, yeah, I mean, they they stopped he's allowing 52. him. 52. Wow. But he was making a movie a year for, he's yeah. been making a movie a year forever. And he's got some of the most absolute classic movies. He's got and classics, yeah, yeah. When you're from New York and you understand that sort of like Jewish New York kind of neuroses and humor, yeah. it's like the best. And there's like, yeah, I mean, He's as about as New York as it gets. Yeah. And so when you're a New Yorker, there, there's just I have such a love for his movies, and um, so yeah, sometimes that's a tough decision, you know. Sure. You know, it's a tough decision. But I mean, his oh, like Ronan has been adamant. It's 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 weird. Like when you have kids, you realize that, like it's very weird for a kid to be adamant that you did something to them as they grow up. That's completely made up. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's, it's almost unheard of, actually. You know, it's I mean, his daughter. Yeah, that right. But daughter. he's but Ronan has like pushed that. He was like, I know my father was doing this, and he and then Woody's like, it's just made up. And you're like, yeah, I don't know, man. I yeah. mean, there are conspiracies where people try to bring someone down. It's a very strange one to do. Yeah, but meaning what I'm trying to say is like. You usually should believe these types of things when people say them, you know? Yes, because why would they? I mean, I, there are occasions where you're going like, all right, like you can get to the circumstances, but usually it's like, if there's a strong accusation about something, you're going like, this person, nobody gets famous that way. Nobody wants to be famous. Like, nobody gets like a victim movie, you yeah. know? It's like, you know, 
it's uh so yeah you always got to give the benefit of the doubt to the lady yeah and then oh my god, god. it's so weird that they're that it's a it's a girl that he adopted that he ended up marrying but you're right it's a love story I mean, yeah well i think technically to be to get technical here i think um she adopted i'm not want to be i'm not def- yeah. i'm not defending i cuz right, right now it sounds like it seems like we're being the lawyers she looks like bobby lee right there he <laughs> shaved <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, is that, bo- uh, right. is that Bobby Shaver's mustache? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I think uh, Mia Farrow adopted her. Right. Correct. Correct. So Sorry. they and they were girlfriend and boyfriend. So, it's but he was like a father figure. Father figure, though. But right. it's, so it's technically wasn't his kid. What's your favorite Woody Allen movie? Annie Hall. And, yeah. Annie, Annie Hall. Hall um, God, Crimes and Misdemeanors is great. Match Point. It's not even. I'll a tell comedy. you this. It's great. I love Match Point. Match Point's so good. I love Match Point, and the, and because I'm always fascinated by, you see this. Here's what's what's more. It's more impressive to do this in a feature than in a series. In a TV series, you get to build like a connection with a character over time, right? So it's like Breaking Bad. Over multiple seasons, you get to know this character so well. Yes, he's actually doing reprehensible things, but you're like, why am I celebrating? Like you're cheering for him. You want him to win, but you're getting seven seasons to build that goodwill. In Match Point, it's ninety minutes, and you're like, God, I hope he gets away with killing yeah. this bitch. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, right? It's crazy. It's not. He's not a good guy. Not at all. And you're, yeah. You want you want that. Do you want him to win? Yeah. It's fucked up. Yeah. But it's like the the storytelling, you're like, yeah. Up. You're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you got away with it. Yeah. Well, you know, I think maybe part of that too is because like, you know how you said subconsciously we always size up yeah. another guy. I think deep down subconsciously, we also, every guy has that thing in our brain going like, all right. Sometimes I feel like I want to murder my wife. Yeah. If I did, I'd love to get away with it. Sure. So you're subconsciously rooting for him going like, all right, how did he do it? And maybe if that happens, I'd like to get away yeah. with it too. And you're like, I need shit to bounce my ways. If that, and that's <laughs> yeah. what you learn in the movie. Yeah, yeah like, I need that. I need Because yeah, it's ding. just that yeah. moment is great where it just doesn't go over there. And know. also it's an anti-Hollywood movie in that sense, yeah. right? Because like Hollywood studios would be like, no, make sure it bounces the other way and the guy gets caught and Absolutely. goes to jail. Yeah, yeah. And like, the, it, there's something about, you know, mass audiences that go like, oh, good, he was he was punished for his crime. Yeah. But for the the real satisfaction is being like, no, he didn't. <laughs> yeah. He got away with that. The Hollywood always has that sort of, oh, the good guy's always got to win at the end. Yeah. yeah. And this one, the bad guy, the bad guy gets away and he the wins. The bad guy gets away. It's more, it's so realistic. A lot of times bad guys do get away with it for a long time. Sometimes they never get caught. It's like I love in uh, Mr. Rip, Talented Mr. Ripley when Matt Damon, you know, he kills, uh, what's his name? Jude Law. Jude Law. Yeah. And then he like tells the father this whole story. He's like, well, I'll just keep paying you his, you know, you need some money. And yeah. he's like, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> he's just like, you see him get away with <laughs> it. Gets everything. away with it, yeah. yeah. And you're like, All Bad right. people are sometimes like really charismatic and like really interesting and fun. And, yeah. you know, that's why like, you never, you like the boring, mean guy you see coming. That's why they don't get away with it. Yeah. Like if some guy comes in, I'm here to murder everybody. You're like, that guy's going to get caught. But like the ones who pretend to be the opposite of what they are, they get away with it for which a long is, time. Which is why, like they tell you the most, dang, like what's actually the, the scariest person? The scariest person is not like mean it's that somebody who is so likable that does horrible things. Yes. Like, and that's like in history... You know, these are like movies, but in history, you know, like some of the most prolific killers and rapists and stuff, they were like, they had charm to them. The so most charm. They, they came in the room, people were like, I love this guy. Yeah. And they had that side and then they had their evil side that would kind of flip, switch on. But yeah, that's actually who's terrifying. And I actually, I don't know any killers that I'm aware of, but like, I know people who I have discovered, I'm like, this is not a good person, but you, I've told people about the, you know, I go, so-and-so, and I go, but here's the thing, if you met him, I go, you'd love him. You'd and love him. And they're like, him. what do you mean? I go, it's, he's one of the most charming guys you meet. I go, you'd, you'd be like, when is, when's he coming to dinner? Again? Yeah. You know? Well, what they do is they like mirror you. Yeah. Which is, and so they play on our weakness of flattery and like yeah. our ego. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm fucking funny. I, yeah. 
So they somehow mirror you and like make you feel great. And they have that superficial charm or whatever. So it like hits your blind spot of like your ego. And then so you, you miss it. Yeah. It's like Ted Bundy used to just like, you know, he was Bundy's so like the, fucking charismatic. He's like the, the, the prototype guy for this. I was watching him defend himself in documentaries about him. I'm like, the guy didn't do it. He didn't fucking do it. He's great. I want to hang out with Ted Bundy. There's, there's a thing uh, on the Bundy trial. If you watch, there's multiple docs now about him. But this is like when um, when somebody, you know, when they saw someone can't get out of their own way, like can't get. So he was never going to, never had the skill set to actually really defend that case and win. Right. But there's one point he puts the um, detective in Florida who came into the sorority house and discovered the bodies on the stand. And then he asks him to describe the crime scene. <laughs> and then he's just enjoying him because he did it. It's like, and he he's like, and then what'd you find? Yeah. <laughs> And the guys just tell, and then you know the other lawyers are going like, there is zero point to this yeah. other than him just enjoying. And that's why he did it probably too. Yeah, yeah. They're so premeditated. It's so funny how like they're so premeditated. They're like a step ahead, and like it's all for them and all selfish. But they make it seem something else. He he was brilliant. Like right, wasn't he the guy who did like the cast thing? And then yeah. he'd get you in the Volkswagen Beetle. You're like, oh man, yeah. I can't. And yeah. then boom, next thing you know, your titties getting bit off. Yeah. yeah. He also did. Um, he was in this Colorado jail and he, he broke out, right? Well, he noticed the vent and then he noticed the size of it. So he just st stopped eating for like two months until he had lost enough weight to fit in through that vent. I mean, that's you know, how it happened? Yeah, that's how he escaped one of them. Dude, that's one of them he did through a library, which um, he, he was like, as a, you know, I'm defending myself and this is in another case. I need access to the library. And they were like, sure. So he would go up to the second floor look through legal and one day he just jumped out of that window jesus but on one of his escapes it was either utah or colorado he went up through the the vent that he had starved himself enough to actually fit into that that isn't you know that's why so many psychopaths are so successful they're unencumbered by emotion yeah it's like they I, ceos they, they don't care about left anything. and right man they don't so he's just focused on like his own needs and wants so he's like i'm just gonna starve yeah. myself for two months to fit when in you there. see these articles in the news they're like so and so slashed 12,000 jobs and, you know, for share prices, we're taking a dip. And then they get that CEO and he's like, it was a very tough decision to make, but we have to keep moving forward. Like, you know, that guy doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> he's just thinking about his bonus. Yeah. You know? I think you maybe need guys like that, though. You do. You do. Right? It's always going to be part of I could never make that. I'd be like, oh, but what about Sally, her yeah. family? And then, like, my company would fail. Yeah. yeah. No, no. You need people like that. I mean, there's different studies on this. But we know for for sure that when it comes to like high level, you know, CEO level stuff and political figures, people, presidents, prime ministers, there's a, a higher propensity for that personality type in yeah. there. You know, emotion like no remorse, guilt free. Yeah. Just and some of them, like they're not all not all psychopaths are highly intelligent, but some are. Yes. And if you're highly intelligent and you're not, you know, you're not um uh, like burdened by guilt and remorse, like you, you can run a company maybe really well. They're probably the most free Americans. Sure. Like, you know, cause- I don't give a shit. Yeah, you're yeah. kind of, they're not shackled by anything. They're totally free. That's real freedom. Yeah. You know, like just be able to kill a woman and just walk away and light a cigarette up and <laughs> go have breakfast. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's freedom, dude. <laughs> Never be able, to, be able to slash 12,000 jobs and then kick your feet up and like turn on ESPN. Yeah. I mean, and not no. even like not, not even a thought. No, just completely free, and unencumbered. Somebody like they ask you like, "Oh, how do you feel about that?" And you're like, "What?" And then they go, "No, no, it's like for the TV." You're like, "Oh, for TV." Oh, yeah, you know, it's it's been a, and then you know, I, it, it was really I, my heart goes out. And then they're like, "Oh, you're off." You're like, "All right, yeah." yeah so <laughs> but, 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 like, just pretend, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think you know our business uh, attracts some psychopaths. It's a perfect. It's like a. It's almost like a. If you had, if you wanted to train to be a dictator, our profession is like you can sign up to learn dictator skills. There's so many sky psychos yeah. on on both sides of it though. In our the suits, oh, the suits too. Yeah, the suits and the performers. performers. I mean, with the performers though, don't you feel like I think it's easier now, like that we've been doing it twenty years. When somebody's young and coming in, you can like just look into their eyes, and you see when they have that like. I don't care about anything but my own progression in this. I can see it. Yeah, like I spot it quicker now, where they're they they're not trying to connect or like 
you know, they're just like, what can you, like when someone's like, what can you do for me? That's kind of like a telltale yeah. personality disorder thing where it's like, I don't care about any. And then there's people that are in our peer group who I've known for years, who have remained that way. Like I've known you for 20 years yeah. and you're still, what can you do for me? Yeah, yeah. And it's usually like a pretty good sign that that person is, you know, not on the level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not uh, a lot of empathy. Yeah, not yeah. a lot of empathy in there. Yeah, I've been burned a few times. So that instructed me. I learned it. I was we like, need to. You need yeah, to. You need to get burned. It's 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 instructive. You learn what you need to learn. But yeah, some of them are tricky. Some of the you know, and then they're yeah. so you gotta yeah, you gotta learn. And hats off. Sometimes when you hear like a good scam, even in like the news, you go like, hats off, dude. Yeah. You hold it off. Like Bernie Madoff, you're like, hats off, man. Bernie Madoff is hats fucking off. Fascinating. The most fascinating thing about Madoff is if you watch. That latest one, that one that Netflix just made. Such a good doc, yeah. It's so good, but the craziest one, the craziest detail in that, because it, ha- it answers questions that you always wondered that they just don't give you in like a, a, a quick news story, is sometimes they would go into his, like they show up and they're like, this shit just isn't adding up. And he's like, why don't you have a seat? Yeah. <laughs> what do you need? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would, these are the investigators. Yes. That he knows... He's like, you know, uh, defrauding basically. Yeah. And then he's like, what can I get you? Yeah. And they're like, he instilled so much confidence in the way that he would just be like, yeah, no, what, what, what else? What other questions do you have? That they'd go like, yeah, I guess this all adds up. Yeah. And it was just him not being like panicked. Right. Which is another thing that psychos. Oh, are they don't, they, the their heads rate, are like that. <laughs> The heart rate doesn't go <laughs> like flutter and like, oh my God, am I in trouble? They're yeah. like, what's up? Like, like, this is what I've been living yeah. for. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they're stabbing with your pen and they're like looking at their iWatch, like still at 57 yeah. heartbeats. 57. Yeah. Don't feel a fucking There's thing. There's psychopath fighter pilots that yeah. are like that. There yeah. really are. Yeah. And race car drivers that are like, they're fucking, they're made like that, but they're not evil. Right. You know, they don't, you don't have to be evil to be a psycho. I think people miss. Absolutely. It's true that. A lot of people, the race car drivers, a lot of like very dangerous jobs, yeah. a lot of psychopaths. Yeah, go yeah, into because that. you're just always, it's a personality disorder. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, like, if that person did something evil, they wouldn't feel bad about it. Right. But they're not necessarily looking to do that. Right. And know? they're probably not doing it for selfish reasons, but that's fine. Yeah. Somebody needs to fly fighter jets. Somebody needs right. to. Yeah. So, hey, buddy, why don't you fucking gear up? That Sit great down. line in uh, Catch Me If You Can from. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio's character when he says, you know, like the, the Yankees always won because um, the people couldn't, were looking at the pinstripe. They were too mystified by the pinstripes. Yeah. It's kind of that thing with yeah. Bernie Madoff. It was just like, he was so cool about it. It was that mystique of confidence that you were just like, I guess. And I got to tell I you guess right, he's right now, when you watch this thing and you hear the stories about, you know, he had the thing where he was like, I, you, you know, I just don't have room for any, he had no soliciting. In other words, if you were like, I want to invest my money with him, he'd be like, I have no room for you, right? All this shit would have worked on me. It would have worked on me too, yeah. And, and, and when I'm watching him, if I sat down with this guy, I'd be like, wow, this guy's the fucking man. Yeah. And like, what an honor it is. He used to be the chairman of, the, of NASDAQ and like, I don't know how many boards. And, you know, I, I mean, it, it's like, I would have just been like, so, sir, what should I do? You know, with like, I would have been so respectful. And if, if he, if he would have said like, you know what, Tommy, I'll do your favor. If you want to move your money over to me, I'll, I'll, I'd be like, oh my God. Yeah. We got to send this money today. At some point he was like, yeah, he was like chairman of the body that was, would be in charge of investigating him. I think SEC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think he, <laughs> he actually yeah. worked there. He worked at, I know he was chairman of NASDAQ at one point and like, he just had that, you know, that type of the way that he just spoke so much confidence, like, you know, the same way the investigators are like, what should we do? And he's just like, what do you need? And it's that thing, too, that he's aware of the blind spots yeah. in humans. He was chairman of NASDAQ, 1991, 93, and he sat on SEC advisory committees. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so those are the people who would investigate guys like him, yeah. and he's like on the committee. He's like Carl. You talked to Carl today. Yeah. I tell, I tell, <laughs> tell him uh, hi. I tell him yeah. I said hi. He's doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, he was so premeditated in that placing himself there, and just the blind spots that he was aware of. That like, if he made himself an exclusive club, like you couldn't get in. Yeah, like, nobody would question it. Of it's course. Like that guy, you can't even get in to see that guy. He's so you know. Yeah. 
And also he knew the greed of people. Because when I was watching that documentary, I was going like, who's the real criminal here? Yeah. Is it Madoff or is he just more of a reflection of people's greed? Because you could easily go to, like talk to anyone at a dinner party who's also invested. They're like, dude, how are you getting those returns when the market's down? And they're like, that's not possible. Not possible. But nobody wanted it. Like, when you're winning, if they're giving you what you want for it, you're not going to. And then, you know, there's. Too good to be true. You're like, it's too good for me right now, so I'm not going to ask any questions. You're like, you kind of got what you deserved then, didn't you, you greedy little pig? There's three big whales that, you know, they feature in the. Yeah. Who basically, they all knew what was, they knew what was happening, but they never spoke about it. And even he was like, we never spoke about it. But he knows that they knew, and they knew that they knew what he was doing. Right. And these, what, what we're saying is like, these are people who were like, when his pyramid scheme would, would Ponzi scheme would like run dry, he would just call up one of these guys and be like, uh, do you want to invest some more right now? And they'd be like, okay, yeah, I'll send you $200 million yeah. tomorrow. But then when things would pick up, they'd be like, I want all my returns right now. So he'd send them like 400 million. And they yeah. were, so they were, ben they were like, they were earning billions yeah. of dollars. Yeah. And they were just like, oh, yeah, I just thought I was investing. No, you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> you knew exactly what you were doing. You were part of it. And Chase, with that account where they just kind of looked the other way, the bank, they were like, ah, we're just looking the other way. Yeah. There's all that money in there. Exclusivity is so fascinating. Like, that you're not allowed in. I I know of, I can't say the, but a business where they're like, yeah, you, uh, you can't get in. You know, you can't, you, you're not allowed to buy one of these. And all it makes people do is, is go like, I want it. More. I want it. And then they're like, well, if you do, you, there's a wait list. Yeah. There's a wait list for this particular thing. And, and then the wait list just makes you go, oh my God, it's more exclusive. And this particular business that I, I, I learned about, they have never advertised. They're like, we've never spent a dollar in advertising. So they've only used that, like, that's it. That mystique. And it's word spread, it's spread amongst like um, very wealthy people. And, you know, it's not, I, I just heard about this thing um, and I met somebody who works for it. That's why I don't feel comfortable saying what it is, but it's just an item, yeah. like just an object, you know, like we, let's just say it's a watch. It's not a watch, but it's a watch. And it's like, if there's a watch company that's never advertised and then they're like, oh yeah, you can't have one. That people would. go, well, what is it? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And they're like, it's just a special watch. And then you go like, well... You know, if we do let you in, you'll get it in like five years. And people are like, great. <laughs> you know, like, it's just being told you can't have it. Yeah. yeah. It makes me think maybe that uh, we're just at the whim of psychopaths who are creating all these trends and things by using it's, these psychological dude, blind spots. And we actually look ridiculous, but we don't know. Yeah. Because we just want it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you want the it's, chain out, you look great. It's brilliant marketing. Yeah. I mean, that is, well, how do we take that marketing approach to what we do? Hey guys, I'm putting out a special. <laughs> But in 2029, <laughs> buy tickets right now. Yeah, but oh, I'm only letting 300 people <laughs> yeah. watch it. Yeah. Only 300 lucky people. Tickets are $10,000. Yeah. It'll be the best hour you ever... I mean, it's just like, I don't know how you... Yeah, I'm trying to think how you do it. I think it's Great a marketing like, yeah. that only appeals to a certain segment also, right? Because right? a lot of people go, oh, wait, let's fuck off. But I think it's when people are used to getting what they want. That's what it is because wealthy people get what they want. They're used to getting what they want the moment they want it all the time. So when you give them, you know, the special like instructions of no, 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 not now, later. And also not you. Like, what do you mean not me? Right, I right. I can afford it. And they're like, that doesn't matter. Right. I think that's why it really, it really appeals to like, for like luxury items and, and those people. It doesn't appeal. Like a lot of people would walk past that idea. You know, like I like I hate, for instance, I hate um, stores where you see people or even restaurants where there's like a line out. So they're like, there's an hour wait. I'm like, no. One time I did it in Philly where I didn't. It wasn't the Geno's Pats thing. It was another place. My friend was from Philly and was like, no, no, no. If you want the real. Was it Angelo's where you had to stand outside? I don't know. It was a yeah. cheesesteak place. But yeah. I mean, I was in a. And so he's like, this is, you know, this is the spot. And we're just waiting. We're just waiting in the sun. And then we're you know go around the building we, and then the in, inside there's not and so we finally get them and he's like i eat and he's like what'd you what'd you think i go it's a fucking cheesesteak right. like, <laughs> yeah. he goes wasn't that the best i go no it's, it's good <laughs> they're all pretty similar yeah yeah like it tasted good man yeah i'm like no i i regret that i did this yeah you know <laughs> yeah this wasn't worth it yeah but I, that line makes other people go like 
You yeah. got to get in that line. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? Yeah, and it's funny because I did that recently in Philly. It was a place called Angelo's, and it was cold out, and I, you make they make you wait outside. There's no place to wait inside. And then we got the cheesesteak, and there's also pizza there, yeah. right? It was like, I think Dave Portnoy gave it, like, it's the best pizza in Philly or whatever. Yeah. And then I had it, and, like, it was good. But yeah. it wasn't, like... Wait in the cold? It wasn't two and a half hours good. Yeah. But I was so caught up in it. Some guy was walking by watching us freezing, eating slices outside. Yeah. And he's like, man, is it as good as they say? And I was like, yeah, it is. Because also I just didn't want to look like a dick. <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, I didn't want to look like a dick freezing, eating yeah. pizza with like gloves on. So I was like, it is worth it, man. Yeah. So I think that's part of it too. Because like, you don't want to be the dick who's just like having that honest moment going like, I just wasted half my day. Yeah, it's fucking, I know. I, I just met somebody who had 50 cars. He has 50 cars. That's a lot of cars. It's a lot of cars. And I go, you know, I ask him about these specific, and I go, oh, is that like as, like, sp like, is that as awesome? And he's like, it's cool. Drives good. And I was like, that's it? Yeah. <laughs> like, he has like, the, you know, this crazy uh, collection. And I was like, is there one that makes you, and he was like, no. They all just, you know. The wanting it is almost like, more than the getting it, right? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. That's what, what, so what do you do? Like, how do you... When you achieve the thing you want and then you have that emptiness, what do you do? Do you just blow your brains out or? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you do? Because well, it always happens. Everything becomes trite, right? You well, achieve a goal is, and then you're like, all right, that this wasn't is, what this I is the This is now you're getting into like, you're getting into the good stuff here. Yeah. The good stuff is in the realization that you will never have fulfillment from material things. Right. It's it, it like, here's the thing. There's, both extremes are are too much. In other words, somebody who goes like I I just crave things, stuff, you know, that's what's good. like that you will always feel empty. Ignoring the fact that some things are fun and like they, they can bring joy to you. Like what you shouldn't act like that's not true. You can enjoy like a clothes or a nice car like like yeah, that that but it's not going to it's not going to complete you. But getting I think to the point where you realize that is one level of it. And then you have to realize, well, then how do I feel fulfilled? Well, it'll never be from consumption. Consumption of things is not going to fulfill you. You know, you, uh, drugs, uh, like you said, a bullet in the head, that stuff will, will at least put you out of your misery. <laughs> but, but. <laughs> so that's the key. Well, Just... I mean, because if you don't, <laughs> if you don't agree to do that, then you have to do the hard work right. of actually looking inward. That which sucks. That sucks. Yes. Cocaine and bullets are way quicker <laughs> than than actually going, oh, what's right. happening inside of me? I'm yeah. going through that now where I'm taking a peek under yeah. the hood. Yeah. And because you know, I when I have a daughter, a two-year-old daughter, and like something happened where I realized like going on the road cause I had a heavy tour schedule recently. Yeah. And then I was like, I have this new daughter. And since COVID there was this break between like who I was before I had a kid. Cause my kid was born during COVID and now who I am now with this kid, with yeah. my daughter. Yeah. And like, all I want to do is be with my daughter now. And my parents weren't there cause they were like trying to live the American dream sure. and work like, work their ass and off. then I'm like, am I being that same guy? Yo. Cause my kid's not going to go, dad, it's you made cycle. so much money. It's cool. Never. They're going to go, you were fine. They're going to go like, you weren't there. They don't give a shit. You Never. know, everyone respects their, like loves their parents, whether they're a cop or a fire, it doesn't, yeah. they don't care. Time. They respect time. They with respect them. time. So now I'm going like, what am I doing this for now? Yeah. Right. And like I had this moment where I had like this sold out weekend where I went, cause I, I was hoping the tickets were sold, tickets were sold, and the tickets were sold and I felt empty. And I was like, oh fuck. Oh yeah. And that's when you feel that be like, I gotta look under the hood. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to look under the hood. And I'm like, where's the Coke? Here's the- I uh, want Coke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this that's the time to do coke or just buy something stupid and then you'll feel nothing for a little bit I yeah, need, yeah. Escape. yeah and then so i've been looking under the hood a little bit and, you dude i go who am i what do i want why am i doing this fun is one of my favorite things like if i'm having a great time yeah then it's like all right i like that obviously i know i need to make the money for the family and of course the more money the better but i'm starting to go like where's the fun i want to have a good time yeah and then i want to get home to my daughter god this made me so uncomfortable <laughs> This is all the stuff I try to avoid talking about. <laughs> it's tough, man. It's tough looking it under the taking a peek under taking the taking a peek is not good. You don't want to look in the sausage how it's made. Yeah, uh, no, nah, man. <laughs> Why do I do what I do? Who am I? Why? I'm What's have this? To edit out this clip and <laughs> send it to my therapist. It's rough. Yeah, I got three right now. Yeah, I got a team. 
That's good. I got a teamwork. I'm proactive. I got, That's I've, great. I got the guy I've been with forever, right? Yeah. Then I added, uh, I wanted another opinion. I wanted a, someone else. Does <laughs> Does the first guy know about the other guy? No, it's a secret. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, I've thought about doing yeah, this. It's I've it's thought about it's doing a this. Secret. I don't know how to bring it up. I feel bad. It's like a barber. It's like when you cheat on a bar. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I, I can't. It's the one thing I haven't told him. Now thousands and thousands and millions of people know. I hope he finds out. <laughs> what if this is how he finds way. out? What if this is how he finds out? That would be out? fucking hilarious. <laughs> He's like, I'm actually a huge Two Bears fan. I, I was watch watching Two Bears it. every week, asshole. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what the fuck, man? You cheating on me? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. And then who's number three? One time I did a session back to back. You did? Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. I had her, and then when I finished, <laughs> his Zoom call came right at the moment. I scheduled them back to back. This he is had the no best. idea. They don't know. He didn't know. I was already. Does number two know about number one? Neither one of them. Nobody. Either one of them. <laughs> I just want another. I want a second opinion, dude. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How similar are there? Like, it's one of them is a guy. One of them is a guy, and then I. I I intentionally wanted a female. Uh -huh. I wanted like a more nurturing, empathetic sure. look. Because a guy therapist could be like, come on, man, get your shit together. Yeah. Fucking, you know. And I got a lot of mom issues. Uh, so I was like, I need a woman too. Yeah. I need like, you know, two people yeah. getting on this. And then I got a third. I got a psychiatrist who I check in with once okay. a month. Okay. Yeah. Now, but he just throws the pills at you. Do I love guy, that guy. He's like, do what do you guy do? and girl, like number one and number two, do they align in a lot, or is it like, is it, are you like, oh shit, this, this guy's saying this and she's saying that? Like, is it, you know what I mean? Is it like pretty similar feedback or is it wildly different? They align more. And I, you know, they, you got two. I got two, man. Dude, I, I, always, I highly recommend it. Really? I highly recommend it. Yeah. It's been great. It's, I always want sessions to go longer. Yeah. And you always go, like, let's do this again. Let's yeah. do this like every day. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when they cut you off and you're not finished. Oh, yeah. yeah you're yeah. like, no, no, no. You see their eyes dart yeah. <laughs> to the clock. And you're it's like, almost like when a girl sucks your dick and she doesn't, and she stops. And then you leave, like, with Blue Ball. You're like, <laughs> I was about to cry. And you now it's, you got times up, but I was yeah. almost there. It's like yeah. right here. It's right here. And Just you let fucking, it out. Yeah, you got to go talk to someone else. No. Oh my god! But yeah, you don't have that problem because you can go talk to someone else. I got else. another one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she also responds to like texts and stuff like that. So really? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Well, I'm going through like a, that certain. I'm going kind of through this now. Mm -hmm. where I'm going like looking under the hood and having kids, and now I got a second one on the way. And like, congrats on that. Thank you. Do you know what you're having another girl. Wow. So yeah, just uh, you know, girl dad. That's a, that's the name of my tour has been girl dad because yeah. a lot of the jokes are just about like having girls and. um yeah, dude, it's yeah, yeah, I've never loved it. It's like it's brought back everything. Like I built this personality based on the walls that I created to sort of not peek under the hood. Sure, of course. And then we now, all do. what my therapist tell me, I'm in such a good place now, and I've built like a loving family. That now my your brain is sort of like a protection organism. Totally. And then my brain's going like, okay, now you you're in a good enough place now where you can deal with it now. And you're going, but I don't want to. But your brain just goes, here it is. Here it is. You have to do this now in order to become a better person so you can... Yeah. It's like evolution happening. And how about for the your universe? You, you volunteering, you're like, I have a lot of issues with my mother. And then the world just gave you two little girls. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so here's yeah. more of that. Here's more. Yeah. Here's more of that. Here you, you deal with this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's a lot of that. Also, I was shot and I have trauma from that. And like, you were I just shot? kind of buried. Yeah. I forget that. That's Did right. I hear that? Yeah. Where, where, where? Uh, it derailed my whole shit. Especially since I was like... I had trauma from a kid, and then when I got shot, that triggered that. When were you shot? 2001, when I first started doing comedy. Where? Uh, in a, it was outside a nightclub in New York City. Yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, 2001. Was it? May 2001. Um, a stray or somebody? No, just... no, it was an intentional robbery. I was with my, um, so an old friend of mine was a party promoter, we used to, he just, and I used to work there when I started doing comedy. So I would like, and he would carry like a lot of money on him, cash, like to the car. So we had like a security guy walk with us up and to his car, but it was like a setup robbery. It was a setup? It was, it had to be, yeah. The, yeah. Wait, from the security guy? No, uh, no, no, we don't think so, no. No, not him, he's a great, I actually still know that dude. No, not him. So, but we don't know exactly what happened, but the guy, he ended up doing 10 years, he went to prison and everything like that, and I had to testify at the trial, it was brutal. But it was, you know, so he, he was probably, he, he probably just- Was it one guy or multiple? One guy, it was one guy, so I was getting in the passenger side of the car, right? And I just kind of looked over my shoulder and I saw him 
coming with right? the gun out. Saw the gun and f- mask on, like a full, yeah, you know, like the eyes and the yeah. fucking ski mask, like yeah. So I just made the decision to try to get in the car quick and close the door. I don't know why. Like I didn't, I didn't have the money on me. He had the money on me. It wasn't a robbery yeah. with me, but yeah. I just decided to stay there. And I tried to get in. So he saw me, see him, and he kind of sped up and like ran, like sped up and like. As I was closing the door, he like fell in. He beat me to closing the door. And so he kind of fell into the car and it was like a Jeep. It was a Cherokee, I remember. And so I saw the gun in his hand and I just grabbed his hand to like get away. It was just yeah. an instinct. And then I, got, I pushed it down and he fired and I got shot right here in the inner, right close to the penis. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so- So your inner thigh? Inner like, thigh. Like, and it, uh, the bullet traveled up into my butt and stayed there for a while. Cause they just, if a, if a, you know, if a foreign object is in your body, your body will slowly reject to get, it out. Yeah. So they were just like, it's too deep in there eventually. And it did, it would push. Like I'd play basketball and I would feel it like ripping tissue slowly and it would come to the surface. And then eventually a surgeon uh, took it out, which was a funny thing. When the surgeon took it out, I guess they gave me the propofol and they put me in the stirrups cause they were doing the surgery yeah. there. And I woke up from farting right in their face as they were pulling the bullet out. <laughs> It's a true story, actually. Yeah. Like I was in the stirrups. You don't know where you are, and they're down there, like getting the bullet out, and I just ripped. When their face, like you know, the bullet was real close to my asshole. Yeah. So I farted right in the nurse and the surgeon's face. And this this bullet could have gone through your dick. It could have gone through my dick. And the cops were assholes about it when I was in the. So like if you had a bigger dick. Yeah, they were like yeah, if you you know if your dick was a little bigger, it would be a problem. You know, you would have been in trouble there. <laughs> And dude, they treat when they're trying to get information. Yeah, they fuck. They like I was like a victim of a crime, right? Well, yeah. And they come in and like, so what's going on here? Uh, you know, how you doing? This is um, I'm Sergeant O'Hanlon. This is Murphy. Uh, we talked to the guy, and uh, he says if you would have did, if he would have did what he did to me to you, you would have done the same thing. So what is this? Some sort of beef between you guys? Uh, he was like trying to yeah, yeah. get me to what. Because they usually when someone gets shot, it's not like they didn't do something. Right. So and cops will just do that. They'll lie to see if you yeah. say something. And, and I was what, like, are you what are you say? talking what? about, man? And I was like actually hurt by yeah. it. And I was like, I understand why women might get like a little, you know, if like they're like the uh, victims of a crime. And like, so what were you wearing? You know, I'm oh Hanlon, this is Murphy. So yeah. what are you doing out at two in the morning? Just Your dancing, parents are okay with like, yeah, yeah. just dancing, being yeah. a person. Yeah, but you kinda yeah. You like it, right? You drinking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't want to do paperwork, you know? They sure. fucking... They're like, this isn't really a thing, right? It's not a thing, right? Can we make this go away? Because we want to go home. Holy shit. So how do they, do they get that you're not... This isn't a beef pretty quickly, though, when they... Kind of, yeah. Kinda. I mean, I think they kind of did. They weren't like... And you're at the I, hospital? I was at the hospital, and they, they came over to my like bed and like were interviewing me. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, man. and there was a hot doctor there on call. Yeah. And because the shot was like, there's a major artery that runs yeah. up your leg. So, and they also wanted to make sure like nothing was, like my a- anus tube was, I don't know, was yeah. damaged. So she went up. She was hot too, and like she in your like asshole? shot, and I had to, yeah, and she like went and checked and was feeling around to make sure uh, there was no damage. Yeah, and that was not great. No, nah, not yeah, great. A little great, a but little in a bit. weird way. I was feeling opposite. How did this guy get um, caught? He so uh, the shot happened. The cops. This was a like a bad nightclub. It was like a lot of gangsters went to this nightclub. The club was called Envy. Did he get the money? For, I forgot that part. Did he did not get the money. So he, so he shot, shot me and ran. And ran. Okay. Right. And it's amazing because like I was so calm and aware in that moment. So I was like calm and aware. It's really weird. Pain? Are you feeling no, incredible just, pain? No, it's burns. Burn, it burns. But it's a delayed reaction. The, yeah. the, uh, the adrenaline takes care of you. Yeah. You don't feel a fucking thing until yeah. later that it's hot. Yeah. It was hot. Um, and it's just a neat little round hole mm-hmm. with like blood like dripping out of it. Sure. And um, I didn't know where, I, there's so much adrenaline. Yeah, I didn't like, know where I was shot. Yeah, I was yeah. like looking for it. Yeah. And then I, the way I realized was the blood running down my leg. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I, I was so aware. I pretended to be more hurt than I was, even though I didn't know if I was hurt or not, which is weird. I mm-hmm. guess I was still, cause he was like, I, you just feel like completely, you know, vulnerable. You're like, all yeah. right, you got me, you got a gun. So like when he, sh- when I heard the loud noise, loudest noise I ever heard, I smelled the gunpowder. And then I just kind of went limp. So like, I wanted to pretend like I was hurt more than I was, so he would stop, right? And so that's what I did. And I just kind of went limp and fell on the ground, like almost played dead. Yeah. And then he ran away. The cops were close by because they were always watching that club because it was such a problematic club. Jesus. So they heard the shot. Other people, you know, were still on the street. They chased him down. They found him. 
Oh, right then. They got him. So they got him in that bushes. moment? They got the gun. He was done. He, he did. Yeah, he was done. Yeah. Ten years. Yeah. Yeah. Was, Where's your, um, do you remember calling your parents to tell them? Like, what was I going remember on? calling my mother and she came with her sister. And uh, this is actually, I hope I don't cry here. <laughs> because I remember like I, now I'm, she came, she came to the, I was with my uh, girlfriend at the time who was uh, ADA. Mm hmm she was a, a assistant district attorney from Manhattan, so she actually oh knew the, she would. She actually knew the woman who ha held, handled my case. Oh, Jesus! And I was there, and then my mom and uh, her aunt came, and like they came, checked me out, and then they're like, "We gotta, we have some relatives from Greece. We have to go to dinner." And they just like, <laughs> <laughs> she kept her schedule. <laughs> she probably said, "Look, we got, we're still doing dinner. I just got to go stop. My son got shot." And I got to just go stop at the hospital and say hello to him. Check in. You good? Okay. Well, we got dinner. My mother went and ate dinner. She didn't cancel her fucking plans. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I know. Uh, you know what's going on. You know now why I stand on a wood plank and get paid in chicken fingers I for 10 why, years. I know why you do stand up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Um, and did your girlfriend... She stayed. She stayed. Yeah, and I and totally cheated on her and took her for granted. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was there. She fucking yeah. waited on me while I was yeah, whatever. A couple days while I was healing, then I was like, all right, let me fuck some other women. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, we're all pieces of yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're fucking just growing out of rock. What can you do? Uh, I'm kidding, God. by the way. It's yeah. all jokes. Also, uh, women should vote and shouldn't be hit. I was just kidding. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this episode's been fucking really bashing women. Well, some of them deserve it. Sometimes um, depends on what they said. Holy shit! So how long? Just I'm just want to get this full thing. So he didn't get the money. He got caught immediately. He did ten years. He in had prison. priors. Yeah, he got he had priors. Oh, he had priors. Yeah, yeah something um, like that. I don't really remember too much, but yeah, he got caught. It was he went to try, pleaded not guilty. He got convicted. He pleaded not guilty. He pleaded not guilty. What was the defense? I don't know. It wasn't him or something like that. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> um, and what was it like testifying? At I time? hated it. I really didn't want to, like, you know, but... They asked you to. The, the, yeah, they asked me to. Yeah, yeah. It was just brutal. It was like fucking... When you get cross-examined, it's just like, you know. But I was honest. Yeah. I was honest. But what could you get... I mean, you're a victim of a shooting. What are you getting... Cro like, what... Well, what were you wearing? Yeah, like, what, they, what it was asking? all about the ID. Like, so I was just honest because I could not see him. So it wasn't... Yeah. I was just on, and I said oh. I couldn't. I was like, he had a mask on. I couldn't see him, and, you know? But I was like, I did, they had the clothes, and they're like, yeah, I reckon. I was just honest. Yeah. I think my friend was kind of like, that's him. Oh. <laughs> my friend just went all out. He oh, right, was like, he, it's I him. He had the mask, but he got tackled like on the way out of there, right? Who did? The, the shooter, didn't he no, get? No, no, he didn't get tackled. I he ran. You, but I thought, I thought you said that they caught him. They caught him hiding in some bushes. Oh, right, that's what I'm saying, yeah. though. They, but so they got him like, in the immediate aftermath. They got him in the immediate aftermath. He's like, they I found just, the gun. I was just looking for shit in the bushes. Yeah, he's like, man, man. Yeah, I love squirrels and I shit. lost the I, contact yeah. at 2.30 in the morning. It yeah. fell into the bushes. Yeah. He's like, what, And they're like, well, we also found a gun because uh, he, he hid the gun, I remember, under like a car. Uh -huh. like, chucked it somewhere yeah. you know like they got that he's like oh, well i've never seen that thing in my life <laughs> Gun. i don't fuck with guns yeah he had like uh it was like what's this mask i don't know man covid's coming in yeah. 25 years <laughs> <laughs> yeah holy shit <laughs> <laughs> that's wild dude yeah it's uh when i got the bullet removed i was doing social work at the time right i've told this story before but i'll tell you i was doing social work so i the uh I got the bullet removed like two years later, right? Okay. So like I quit comedy. I started doing comedy, but like I was having panic attacks when I would get on stage. It was like, the worst part of it was the psychological part. Afterwards. Of course. Yeah, you're like- And how long, how long are you in the hospital, by the way? Uh, it was one night. Okay. It was just one night. And then like I had to like, it was so swollen that like when I took a shit or pissed, I had to piss like a woman for a while. Yeah. And like I couldn't stand and I'd have to hover like a woman at a uh, club, you Jesus. know, not wanting to sit on a dirty, it was brutal. Um, but uh, so I was doing social work at the time. I was doing 9-11 disaster relief uh, at the time. And I worked with a lot of like older black Christian women. Yeah. So when I got the bullet removed, I had to go first to get the x-ray, right? And the bullet's like right there, right? So I, got, I went and got the x-rays and came back to work and they all knew and they wanted to see it. They were like, let's see the x-ray, I wanna see the bullet. you know? And I hadn't looked at it yet. So there was these big envelopes. So I pulled them out and I put the x-ray up on the window and the x-ray picks up your entire penis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it was like the bullet and like, thank God my penis was a little bigger than the bullet. Yeah. But it was like, <laughs> it was just like a limp penis. Yeah. 
And like all these Christian women were like, just fucking, you know. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> it was really funny. Holy shit, dude. And it, it deterred you from doing sand, those panic Yeah, it fucked me up for a little while. That's when I was like, uh, I started having the, and that's when like, I didn't know what panic attacks were, right? I was like 22 or something like that. I didn't know what they were. The internet was like a new thing in yeah. 2001. It was around, but it was yeah. like, you know, Not compact like, presario. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, um, I was like, what's going on? And plus, like, I was just like a dude. So I was like, I'd get on the train and I'd be like, I'd start like, you know, feeling like that build up of carbon dioxide in your body. Yeah. And like, you're like, am I going to faint? And then you're going, why am I bugging out? Like, I had no, I couldn't make the, your brain is so fucking wild. Yeah. And I've learned like so much, so much is subconscious and like it's making decisions that you're not making yeah. sometimes because it's like protecting you and it thinks you're in danger. And the, when those wires get crossed, those panic attacks, that fight or flight, and I had no idea. And I'd get off the train and I'd be like, ah, and I'd be like frozen stiff. And then one, it got to the point where it's where I was like so frozen stiff I couldn't move. And I told my friend, I was with my friend, I was like, I'm having a heart attack, I'm dying or something like that. And then like you get to the hospital and they're like, you're fine. And you're like, what? What do you mean I'm fine? Yeah. And like that just felt off. And they're like, yeah. And you're like, are you crazy? <laughs> you have a lot of stress in your life. And you're like, no, I'm 22, man. Yeah. And then I went to therapy and I, it's PTSD. I had like yeah. trauma from, because you go from this benign denial, right? That's what I call it. I, I, fig, I figure that's the best way to describe it. You live your whole life thinking that nothing like that can happen, right? So you live in benign denial. You just don't think about it. But then when it happens, your brain for a while goes to the other extreme right. and you go like, oh shit, this shit could happen at any moment. Sure. And you're not even consciously doing that. Right. It's like your brain going like, look out, like, who's it's behind the you? the computer is running. Fuck. And, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you have to deal with that. Well, because like, it's one of those things where somebody goes, what are you going to get shot? You know, like when you're out there, it's like most people go, you're, it's not going to happen to you. Right. And then you go, yeah, I'm not going to get shot, dude. It's crazy. It's a crazy thing to say or think. And then like when you, when that... 1% of 1% thing happens to you, you're like, oh shit, this yeah. stuff does happen. Yeah. yeah, and it could happen at any moment, I guess. Now that's yeah. what your brain's doing. You know what else? I did have that moment. I know that I don't want to freak you out, but mm. I did have that moment of like, because I thought I was dying. Like it was, it felt like this is it. I had that moment. It's a, that moment is so weird because it's like a dream. Time slows down. I was doing like 10 things at the same time. Your brain just like takes care of you. You're going like, this is my last moment. So you think about people you love. You're like, you're, def you're thinking about how you're going to deal with the situation that's happening at hand. And you're also going, oh, fuck, this is it. Yeah. Like, and then you look at your life. Yeah. You have that moment where you go yeah. like, who was I with the... And dude, yeah, you don't think of it. It's cliche, but the truth is I had that moment. You don't think about the cars. No. You don't think about the loot. It's, you think about people. I'll say that it's yeah, people. You think about people. And maybe the, that's because we're a social animal and that's animal stuff too, but you think about people. And here's the thing. You weren't on uh, death store, but your brain still my does brain, that. I had that. My brain was like, this is it. And yeah. I had the same thing when I was in the hospital. I had a broken arm and a, a leg that didn't function. So like when did I, that what happened when I played basketball? Like oh 20, yeah, yeah, two years right. ago. Well, you tried to do the air yeah, to do the air cigar. <laughs> but in that hospital, like when I was gonna go into surgery, I was incredibly emotional, and I was looking at life the same. Like in other words, and it wasn't, I wasn't, um, you know, consciously doing this. It was just happening to me. Where I was like, what am I doing with my life? And that's all I was thinking about relationships, people, what I've done with my life. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about anything else. I wasn't thinking about stand-up comedy or careers. I'm thinking about people. What what's the point of life? How am I living life? You know, parents, uh, uh, you know, family, friend, like all those things. Very emotional, extremely, and felt uncontrollable. And yeah, and you, and then someone would go like, "What are you? You, you have broken limbs. Like you're not gonna." But it's like, yeah, it just happens Some, anyway. Because you know why? Because it's traumatic. Yeah, it was trauma. It was so traumatic that it triggers that response in your, in your mind, in your body, and you just, you just kind of, you're in that. You're it's just a wild it. moment. And then you come out of it and you're like, women are fucking stupid. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. what it was. You know? <laughs> <laughs> now I feel fine. Yeah. You're like, I'm just, it just feels good to admit it. They got smaller mm -hmm. brains. That's why the basketballs yeah. are smaller. And smaller you know hands, smaller brains. Smaller hands, smaller brains. <laughs> I can kick any woman's ass. Yeah. <laughs> Run up, try to talk shit, see what happens. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I told the nurse, I go, yeah. I'll fuck you up. You know? <laughs> uh, 
Um, Giannis Papas, everybody. <laughs> Make sure you check out his special Mom Love available yes. on YouTube. And you have another one. It was it was it running? Yeah, the- blowing the light. Blowing the light. Andrew Schultz produced that. That's on YouTube as well. Please go to GiannisPapasComedy.com for tickets. Again, please come see me at the Wilbur. Come see me. Gotta at- go. Thank you. Austin, and- go, go, go. Yes. We're uh, out the Paramount. Paramount in Long Island and um, uh, the uh, Sony Hall in New York City and a bunch of other dates. Uh, just go to GiannisPappasComedy.com for tickets. See me live. There you go. It's always better live. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bert and Tom. Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call... Two bears, one cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur partology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave.